At E3 2018, a new Halo game was announced, Halo Infinite. So far, the only thing we know about this Halo game is that it's a story following the Master Chief set after the events of Halo 5. So it's Halo 6, but not really Halo 6. Anyway, the trailer offers a pretty picturesque look into what Halo could look like in a nice engine. Oh, also, I don't know about you, but when I first watched this trailer, it was on the YouTube stream of E3, and it looked okay, but watch it again on a 4K display, and ooh. Point is, at the end of the trailer, we get to see the Master Chief, and obviously, his armors change just a bit. Chief's helmet in the Halo Infinite trailer looks much closer to how it looked in Halo 3. Now some fans think the return of the classic art style also means the return of the classic gameplay that we knew in Halos 1, 2, and 3. And while that could still happen, I don't necessarily think so. While I'm super happy to see the old Master Chief design return, which means the classic art style has returned, I don't think that's what defines Halo. So what defines Halo? What makes a Halo game a Halo game? I think recently there's been an idea floating around that Halo is starting to drastically change, but really, Halo has changed from day one. Many Halo fans see the original trilogy of Halo games, or Halo 1, 2, and 3, as the most pure form of what a Halo game should be. But there are marked differences between Halos 1 and 2 and Halos 2 and 3. Really, all of the original trilogy are very different from one another. For example, in Halo 1, there was an energy shield-based system, which has been in every single Halo game. But there was also a health-based system. This health-based system was only in Halo 1. But by Halo 2, it was completely removed. We only had shields in Halo 2. And I don't necessarily think that that one change makes Halo 2 not a Halo game. Halo 3 doesn't have a health system either, it just has shields. Would you argue that it isn't a Halo game because of this? These are kind of weird arguments, but it's the internet, people say anything. The point that I'm trying to make here is that Halo has always changed. There has always been some new rendition with the new Halo game that changes the formula up just a bit. So no, there isn't a true definition of what makes a Halo game a Halo game. But I guess now it's actually fairly important to look at what makes Halo Halo. What if any elements of a Halo game have stayed consistent across all of Halo's releases across the last 16 years? And because of all the change, there isn't much. One of the main things that every Halo game has stayed consistent on is fair starts. Meaning at the start of a game in Halo, the red team and the blue team start with the exact same weapons. Power weapons, or weapons that will give you an advantage like a sniper or a rocket launcher, are scattered around the map. If you want to be a sniper, you can't just pick a sniper class like in Call of Duty. You have to go pick up the sniper on the map and defend it. Personally, for me, fair starts has always been the element of Halo that I've enjoyed and it's one of the reasons that I keep playing it. It's the one thing that's always stayed consistent across all of Halo. So no matter how a Halo game changes, as long as those fair start aspects are still there, it's still a fair game to play. So sure, in Halo 5, you're going to have armor abilities like Sprint and Spartan Charge and Thruster Pack, but so does the enemy. If you lose in a game of Halo or the enemy player kills you, it's because he was just simply better. And that's what I've always really loved about Halo. But now it's time to look at all the Halos to find out what makes all of these Halo games Halo games. So now we've switched over to Halo 1 on the Master Chief Collection. We're just playing some 2v2 Capture the Flag. Halo 1 is sort of a weird time for Halo in general. I mean, Halo's known for its multiplayer, right? But Halo 1 didn't even have multiplayer. I mean, not over Xbox Live like we know it today. Everyone quit the game. I don't... I, what sucks is I was going to talk about Halo 1, but like, it took me almost 20 minutes to find that one game, so we're not going to do that in live commentary. This is Halo 1, and we're not going to take too much time here because there's a lot of Halos to get through I don't have all day. But here I wanted to show Halo 1, the origin of Halo, and show you that Halo has changed throughout the years. Constantly, it's been changing. Halo, at least from a multiplayer standpoint, has always really been about one thing. Thing. Red and blue colored Spartans killing each other. The difference is, in Halo, everyone starts with the same weapons. So if an enemy player kills you, he killed you because he was better, not because he had a better weapon. This idea of fair starts, fair gameplay, is a main tenet of Halo. But like I said before, Halo's always been changing. Take a good look at this, it's Halo 1. Now it's time to go through all of the Halos and see how we've changed. And maybe by the end, you won't even recognize it anymore. But it's still a Halo game. Halo 2 found a lot faster, looks like it's uh, much more populated than Halo Combat Evolved. We're gonna play some Team BRs on Turf. Now, Team BRs, which is one of the most popular game types in all of Halo, stands for Team Battle Rifles, which is the weapon that I have now, and that was new with Halo 2, and that's one of the biggest sandbox changes you're gonna see with Halo 2 compared to Halo 1. But even our shields and health are a little bit different too. Remember Halo 1, we had those health packs? Well, in Halo 2, we are down just to a single shield. With Halo 2, there's a larger overall change to health, so you'll see that my shields in the bottom left go down when I'm shot, or whenever I get hit with grenades, like I just did, but I don't actually have a health bar like I did in Halo 1. So there's no way to monitor exactly how much health you have in Halo 2, you just sort of lose your shields and then you will die soon after. So this is the format that Halo's been based off ever since. We haven't gone back to the health bar except with Halo Reach, but you know. I think personally it makes the game a little bit more consistent, right? You're not ever going to be fighting a guy on, on low health with equal shields. Every guy you fight, as long as he has full shields, is going to have the exact same health as you. It makes the game more fair, you know, brings more of that fair starts mentality to Halo. Personally, it's one of the reasons why Halo 2 is my one of my favorite, at least, Halo multiplayers. Everything 
everything in the game just feels so clean and consistent. I mean, look at the battle rifle. It shoots right where you want it to be, even though the graphics don't actually really show it that well. I sort of have a soft spot for Halo 2 in my heart. You know, it's, it's one of those games that was, well, it was actually the first game I ever played, you know, over Xbox Live on multiplayer with, against other people. So it was the first time I really got into competitive gaming, you know, and trying to be better than other people on the internet. The thing with Halo 2, though, and it is a common criticism, is that the only weapon that's even worth picking up, really, I mean, yeah, there are some good weapons, is the battle rifle. If, if I try to use this SMG on this guy, I guess he died because my friends were using battle rifles on him, but most of the weapons that aren't the battle rifle in Halo 2 are pretty much trash. So I guess it really depends on who you ask if, you know, the person likes Halo 2 or not. If they're maybe more of a sweat and they like using the battle rifle instead of something like an assault rifle or an SMG, then they probably like Halo 2. Got it! This is... it's cramped in here. Okay. We're gonna play, oh geez, we're gonna play some Halo 3. We should be able to find a game pretty much instantly. Oh, we gotta play the pit. That's like the most absolutely 100% most voted map of all time. Halo 2 was fairly different from Halo 1, right? But Halo 3, fairly similar to Halo 2. Really not too many things have changed. Now they've moved a lot of things around on the actual screen, but your health and most things like that are exactly the same as Halo 2. I don't actually have a health bar, I just have shields, and after my shields go down, I'll die soon after. This guy is just a... Oh. What's interesting in, in Halo 3 and what's interesting about this game that I got is I got regular Team Slayer where you start with an assault rifle, which is this weapon, and a pistol. So you don't have a whole lot of range. And uh, Halo 3 has the battle rifle, like Halo 2 does. And uh, in a game like Team Slayer, if you can pick up a battle rifle around the map, you're going to have a huge advantage against a lot of the players in the game. So yeah, like Halo 2, the battle rifle kind of ruled Halo 3. And I guess you could see that as a criticism, that uh, the game, is, the meta, was pretty much ruled by one weapon. Halo 3 also gave us a lot of this, like, third-person stuff. You could rip off turrets for the first time and go into a third-person version of your Spartan. And while this strategy isn't, like, good or anything, like, you're not going to get a ton of kills or a huge spree if you're ripping off a turret because you're slow and you don't really shoot that accurate, uh, it is sort of cool and it gives you uh, sort of a look at what Halo 3 did to Halo, which was it gave us a lot of different ways to kill each other. The last thing they added were these things called equipment. So if you press the X button or whatever button it is to use equipment in, in Halo on your, uh, your button layout, I play Bumper Jumper, you can use equipment like this, which is new in Halo 3. This is a regenerator, it gives my shields a little bit of a boost, makes me pretty much invincible well, as long as I'm staring or standing in this, uh, this green barrier. It's not really a barrier. I guess it's more of like a pulse. I don't know. I, I have to wait for it to spawn to do another take. So we're just going to go with, yeah, I'm, we're just going to go with that one. So while Halo 3 did change some things, it wasn't that much different from Halo 1 or Halo 2. The first three Halo games all are fairly similar. Yeah, there's some little subtle changes, but for the most part, yeah, they play the same. Now, being that Halo Reach is a prequel to Halo 1, you're playing as a Spartan 3, which isn't as strong as a Spartan 2, which you are playing in Halos 1, 2, and 3. So if you look at the shield indicator, not only do I have shields, but I also have health. Now, if my shields are wiped, my health will go down if I'm shot or punched or whatever. Like in Halo 1, though, the health really doesn't do much. If you're down and you're out of shields, you're going to die pretty quickly, even if you do have full health. Wow, I just missed that shot. And then I died! Oh! Reach also brought in more weapon changes. Like, you can see that I'm using the DMR, or Designated Marks, rifle. There is no battle rifle in Halo Reach. The DMR was the new kind of flagship weapon. Bungie changed up a lot of different things with Reach. Also, Halo Reach was the first Halo game to bring in armor abilities and things like sprint. So if I kill this guy real easy because he's a noob, I can sprint by pressing the X button because I'm on bumper jumper. And that was the first time, at least with Halo Reach, that we had anything like this. We could sprint, we could do other abilities. I'll have to kill myself to show you the rest of them. But you can choose things like jetpack or armor lock, active camouflage or hologram. It was the first time that you sort of had a loadout, even though everyone had sort of the access to the same different loadouts and, and weapons and stuff. So it wasn't insanely customizable like Call of Duty, but at the start of a game you could sort of pick what strategy you wanted to play on each map. So right now I have the jetpack, I'm more dead- oh wow, he killed me again. He's using that camouflage. That's like the third time he's killed me with camouflage and the grenade launcher. Well, like on this map, I can use the jetpack to get weird angles on the enemy team. I can't go too high, but I can use the jetpack to come in and kill these guys when they're not expecting it. 
it really diversified how Halo was played. Uh, a lot of people liked it, a lot of people didn't like it. I think more people liked Halo Reach than didn't like Halo Reach, and I think it was sort of a refreshing change to the franchise overall. So while you might nowadays hear a lot of you know, hubbub about armor abilities in Halo and how they don't belong and how Sprint shouldn't be in Halo and things like that, I think Halo Reach did it fairly well. Not great, and obviously uh, I would like to see a Halo without Sprint or armor abilities, but I don't necessarily think that Halo Reach is any less of a Halo game than, you know, Halo 1, 2, or 3. I mean, obviously, people are still playing it today. I'm playing it on the Xbox 360, and yeah, people are still here. Reach is like that weird uncle, you know? He shows up at Christmas, you're like, oh, hey, I, I forgot you exist, but now you're here. Cool. Halo Reach was also sort of a one-off for Bungie. It's, it's not like Bungie was going to keep making Halo games after this. We sort of knew it was their last sort of ride out into the sunset game. So even though we have things like the Abomination, that is... Armor luck. Uh, there are a lot of really cool things in Halo Reach 2, and because it was sort of new and fresh, I think that's the reason why people don't necessarily hate Reach. Though, uh, when it comes to Halo 4, there are there are widely different opinions on it. I got 16 kills, but we still lost. Now, before we go over Halo 4, I think it's important to show the loadouts, which were new with Halo 4. This was the first time we ever got customizable loadouts before a game even started. So you can choose what weapons you have before even going into a game of Halo, which kind of throws fair starts completely out the window at least with Halo 4. I'll show you what I mean. So this is my first loadout. It's pretty standard. You have your battle rifle as your primary weapon, of course. But then if you come down to your secondary weapon, while the default choice is a magnum, which is, you know, like any other Halo game, you can also choose to have a bolt shot, which if you remember in Halo 4 was like a pocket shotgun. Or I could spawn with a plasma pistol, which means I always spawn every single spawn with a noob combo. You can choose from perks called tactical packages and support upgrades that give you different buffs depending on which ones you choose. And all of these interact with each other in Halo 4's multiplayer. Now the criticism here is this is a lot like Call of Duty and of course throws fair starts out the window. And Halo 4 is remembered as one of the worst Halo games because of it. Halo 4, it, it, it's fun, sure, it's a Halo game, it's, it's that experience, you know, you feel like you're playing a Halo game, but at the same time, there's something... I don't know, missing. Not missing. There isn't anything missing in Halo 4. There's too many things added. It's not a problem of there being too little stuff. It's a problem of there being too many things. I really, I, it says players found, but I'm sure that's just placebo. I really don't think we're going to find anybody. Apparently, there's six other people like me, lonely enough to play Halo 4 out there. Us! Oh, seven! I guess we're playing Team Slayer on Skyline. There's a... Oh my god. This damn hunter has a 50 in Halo 4. What, what is he doing with his life? Again, I already sort of explained why a lot of us Halo fans don't like Halo 4, because it gets rid of fair starts, which I think of all the tenants of Halo is the one that you shouldn't mess with. Yeah, so I'm gonna try... I'm gonna choose my noob combo loadout. So I always spawn with a plasma pistol and a battle rifle, which will allow me to... Get sick, tasty noob combos on all of these noobs. Oh, and did I tell you I can see through walls? Yeah, look, I don't even have to, like, think anymore. I just can see through walls, and there's the enemy. All right, let's noob combo this guy. He doesn't know. He doesn't know about the noob combo in my back pocket every single time. Oh, this is a 300 IQ play. Wow, he just destroyed me. But I'll get him with a noob combo, maybe. It would be better with a jetpack, but you can't change your loadouts on the fly. So, this system... Couldn't even be implemented correctly, really. Halo 4 is the Halo game that's the most, like, Call of Duty, and if you know anything about Halo or its fans, that's, like, the biggest insult that you could ever give a Halo game. Let's switch to our other loadout, where I have a uh, active camouflage. I can go invisible around the map anytime I want. Now, it does have this radar jammer that lets, you know, the enemy team know that there's an invisible character running around, but still, I can go invisible with a DMR on any map I want. Other than the loadouts, though, Halo 4 plays pretty much the same as, like, Halo 3 and Halo 2. Uh, this formula's still there. You just shoot a guy with your shields. Same old, same old. It's just sort of the execution of how you fight people and how you choose weapons and everything like that is totally off from what makes Halo Halo. I mean, I'm not gonna totally hate on Halo 4. I had some fun times on it. Oh my god, he just bolt shotted me. For old time's sake, I want a bolt shot kill. I want to just charge in with the shotgun fist. Oh, he got me first. I just want to charge in with nothing but a pocket shotgun and get the kill. This game's broken. Not broken, just bad. Like, look at that. That's not okay. That's not okay, 343. Who okayed this? Phil Spencer, was it you? Bonnie? Bonnie, I know you've been, I know you've been on that Halo. 343 lost a lot of our trust with, with all of this. And yeah, uh, to their credit, it is a little bit more fixed nowadays. Uh, they, they brought in things like Infinity Slayer, which brought back fair starts a little bit, but 
the fact that the game launched like this in, in the state currently that I am playing it in, Halo Call of Duty, I don't know. It's always sort of forever tarnished, I think, because of that. I don't think 343 will ever get rid of that sort of distrust that they've always had in the Halo community. You know, everyone sort of trusted Bungie, but no one really expects 343 to do anything right. The things you want to see in common with all these Halo games are is that there's pretty much only one rule when it comes to Halo. Have a game with guns that's a first-person shooter where you have shields and fair starts. If you can do that, then you've got a Halo game. Halo 5, The Great Debate, the sequel from Halo 4. Uh, we'll play some free-for-all for good old time's sake. Let's get, let's just get destroyed live. Oh, ooh, we might be finding one. I think we're good, yeah. We're gonna play some Plaza, Plaza free-for-all. Halo 5 was sort of 343's redemption after Halo 4. They sort of dulled back, or dumbed down a lot of the uh, different Call of Duty-esque feeling things that we had in uh, Halo 4 and made a pretty good Halo game. Uh, fair starts are one of the things that is big in Halo 5. I mean, it's it's the main focus of a lot of the competitive multiplayer. Now, there are things like Warzone where there's a little bit less focus on fair starts, but in the competitive side of Halo 5, which is clearly defined, uh, fair starts are in every single game mode. Sure, the weapons are a bit different. I mean, you can see the noob combo is absolutely... It just shreds everyone that you're going to shoot it at. Let's get another guy here. Oh, got him. Maybe one more behind me. One more behind me. Unless he's gonna come over here. I might be able to get him. Nope. I think people might misunderstand me when I'm trashing Halo 4, that I'm mad about sprint or armor abilities or anything like that. And I don't think any of those things really matter in a Halo game, personally. I mean, I, th I think a Halo game, at the end of the day, what I've been saying this whole video, is a Halo game needs to have fair starts and it needs to have some shields and some guns. As long as you got that, you're playing Halo. Sure, I have armor abilities like Sprint and Armor Lock and Thrust... Or I don't have Armor Lock, but I have Thruster Pack. I just used it. Ground Pound, Spartan Charge, those sort of things. I have all of those abilities, but so does the, my opponent. This little orange Spartan that looks terrible and should be using the Seeker armor. You died because you did it! You Seeker! Um, he, he could have killed me with all of his abilities that I had, too. It's not like I'm using a secret ability that allows me to see through walls, or someone else uses an ability that counters my ability to see through walls. No, we all have the same stuff. I'm doing decent in this free-for-all game. It, they must be sort of low. It is my first game. I might be with, like, uh, maybe I'm just warmed up. I haven't played Halo for, like, an hour now. Just gotta get good at killing, uh, stealing kills if you want to play free-for-all. That's all you gotta do. There's a lot of people that think 343 Industries are going to kind of dull back a lot of the Spartan abilities and other things that we've seen in games like Halos 4 and 5 uh, with Halo 6. But I don't necessarily think that's going to happen. I think with a game like Halo 6, what we're going to see is probably something similar like what we saw in Halo 5. Though they're probably going to nail it with the fair starts, as this game has been tailored to be a little bit more competitive and sweaty. Eh, it's still close. It's 18 to 16. I'm doing okay. This flow is pretty good, though. Well, we lost to this flow, but uh, he's pretty good. So, I'm okay with it. If we've learned anything, it's that Halo has always been changing, and it'll probably continue to change throughout its life. But that also means that Halo probably won't die anytime soon. I myself have been incredibly hyped for Halo 6. I mean, I mean Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite. Yeah, that's what its name is. Yeah, sure, we probably won't be seeing anything on it until probably like 2019, but yeah. It's got the Halo blood flowing, and people are talking about Halo again, which is always fun. At the very least, we will see some betas for Halo 6. Bonnie Ross said there would be betas. And split screen, remember? I, I remember Bonnie. I'm really hyped. I'm gonna have a a lot of coverage for Halo Infinite. I'm definitely going to play the hell out of the beta when it comes out. It's going to be a lot of fun, guys. We're still going to have Halo. If you liked this video want to make sure you don't miss any of the other ones, please click the LTN logo in the top left of your screen. If you subscribe to me, you'll stay up to date on all of the new videos that I have coming out. We cover Halo news, Halo analytics, Halo lore, and sometimes some other stuff. So thank you all for watching, Halo fans. I want you all to please stay notable, and I will see you in the next video.